All right, so next we're going to look at an example of inelastic collision. So they start apart and end apart. And typically in that collision, we lose energy. That's what makes it inelastic. So the example we have here is an 80 kilogram tuber starts at the top of a five meter high hill and slams into a 40 kilogram child on a tube at rest. After the collision, the 80 kilogram tuber continues on to strike the hay at a gentle four meters per section per second. Friction is negligible. How fast does the child careen into the frozen haystack and is kinetic energy conserved? So is it elastic or inelastic? I kind of already gave it away, but we want to figure out how do you know if it's an inelastic or an elastic collision? So big reason we're doing this question. Uh, I just want to make sure you're using correct etiquette at the snow hills now that you're a little bit bigger and you have to watch out for those kids that maybe don't get out of the way as you come down. And you're like, hey, get out of the way, and they didn't. So let's see what happens. So the first idea is you start at the top of this hill. It's five meters high. You slide down it, and then you hit the child. And when you hit the child, then you continue on in the same direction because you have a larger mass. You will continue on, and the child goes forward. We want to know how fast is that child going forward after the collision. So this is kind of a two-part problem. The first thing we need to do is we need to know how fast are you going to be going when you get to the bottom of the hill so we know how fast you go into that child. So that's our first step here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to set up a work kinetic energy theorem problem just from last chapter. And I see that I have gravitational potential energy at the top, kinetic energy at the bottom. Now the kinetic energy I get at the bottom is going to be my initial for my momentum problem. So I'm going to kind of have one problem where the end of that problem becomes the start of my next problem. All right, so here I get 0 equals 1 half mv squared minus mgh. The m's cancel. We do not care what mass you have. You will be going the same speed at the bottom. And so your v is equal to the square root of 2gh. And so in this case, the square root of 2 times 9.8 times, I think it was 5. So the speed is going to be the square root of 98 or 9.9, .9. oops, 9.9 .9 meters per second. I'm going to use this square root of 98 when I do my calculations. I am going to write 9.9. .9. So if you get different numbers, make sure you're using that exact value. So here you come in at 9.9 .9 meters per second, a full sprinting speed. How fast is that kid going to come out when you slow down by a little over maybe almost six meters per second. So here you are at 80 kilograms and the kids at 40 kilograms. You're coming in at 9.9 .9 meters per second in the positive direction and leaving in the same direction at four meters per second and the kid starts at rest. So we now have only one unknown. We can set up and solve that. Now this is a frictionless surface or nearly friction is negligible for the time of that interaction. And so we can go ahead and say momentum is conserved. The only forces acting on the system are internal. There are no net external forces. So I can set up my momentum conservation equation here, start crossing stuff out that's zero, and solve for V2 prime. So I get M1 V1 minus M1 V1 prime equals M2 V2 prime, divide the M2 over equals V2 prime. Plug in my numbers, so I'm going to have my 80 times V1, which was my 9.9, .9, minus my 4. So I factored out that M1 here as 80, divided by my 40 will give me V2 prime. Plug that in your calculator. You get 11.8 meters per second. And here is the reason why we are doing this, because you need to know that if you hit that poor child, you're going to be sending them out at about 26 miles per hour, way too fast for them to be going toward that hay bale. Okay. The next part of this question wants to know, was, was kinetic energy conserved? Is this a elastic, meaning the kinetic energy change is zero, or is this an inelastic, meaning the change in kinetic energy is negative? So all we need to do is we need to find the change in kinetic energy. So we're going to use this change in kinetic energy equation, which is the kinetic energies afterwards minus the kinetic energies before. Now we can cross one of those out because the child brought no kinetic energy to this event. You brought it all. So now we can plug in our values here. So I get delta K is equal to 1 half times 80 times V1 prime. That's this number I just solved for here. 
plus one half, oops, I'm sorry, this was the four number, plus one half times 40 times the number we just solved for here, 11.8 squared, minus my one half times 80 times what you brought to the event here, the 9.9 .9 squared, which is just gonna be 98 when you take the square root of 98 squared. Plug that in your calculator, and we find that a change in kinetic energy was negative 496 joules, and that energy is lost to heat, sound, and yes, deformation. Um, this negative means that we lost energy, and that's the clue that this is an inelastic problem because we lost kinetic energy. Start apart, end apart, lose energy, inelastic.